Well, welcome to the Medical Marijuana and Wellness webinar series. Uh, tonight's topic is going to be is going to be arthritis and medical marijuana. And uh, I will be changing my uh, banner in just a minute. But what I wanted to do initially is to uh, introduce Lisa Black. Lisa is going to be co-hosting with us this webinar. Uh, Lisa, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us a little bit about uh, about INSA. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for attending the webinar tonight. Uh, as Mark mentioned, I am from INSA. I've been with the company now for five years. We are a Massachusetts-based company, but we are rapidly expanding in Florida. We have five stores open, and the sixth is going to be open any day now, feels like. And so keep an eye out for that. Uh, we are a company that is really, uh, you know, rooted in the idea that we want to make the patients and customers stay better. And so whatever it takes for us to make your day better, we're going to do it. And so we try to provide not only really top quality cannabis products, but cannabis education is something that we really, really focus on. And so if you have any cannabis questions, come into any of our dispensaries or give us a chat or a phone call on our website, and we will be more than happy to help start you on your cannabis journey or help you along the way. Well, Lisa, before we start, tell us what INSA stands for. I think it's a great name. But oh, yeah. everybody always says, what's INSA? You know, where does that come from? I know they think it's an acronym, but it's not. It is a combination of the word indica and sativa. So that's where you get the INSA from. And it is to show our dedication to crafting the world's best hybrids. Cool. You know, one thing that's really cool about INSA is not only do we have those uh, strains and cultivars that you've heard of and that have been around for a little while, but we actually invent our own in-house. And so that's one thing that's really neat is that come to an INSA dispensary, you're gonna find a strain or cultivar that you literally can't find anywhere else in the world. And yeah. so our name sort of reflects that innovation that we strive for. Well, that, and I think you have some of the best chocolates in the industry. So we're, we're, we'll get into that. Uh, <laughs> I'll your thunder for later. Listen, I want to, I do want to, um, I do want to uh, break into a quick presentation, just do a quick intro for, for today. Um, so let me do my, my screen share here. All right, today's webinar is on arthritis and medical, medical marijuana. I know that, at least from my standpoint, I am a person who does suffer from um, arthritis. Uh, I have it in my knees. I have it in my neck. I have it. Uh, welcome to being a senior citizen. And it's something that is both, um, it's, it's distressing because obviously there's the pain and it's some of the, some of the um, mobility issues that come into play. So I think uh, what I have found is that medical cannabis has helped me quite a bit. In fact, it's almost uh, negated the whole uh, process of pain and inflammation on, uh, with, uh, uh, with, inflam with arthritis in my body. So it's something I think that's really important. And a lot of people that are right now suffering from that, we plan to talk about uh, what we plan to talk about it. I do want to mention a couple of things, though. Um, we will send you a copy of an email as a follow-up to this particular webinar. And that email will have a recording. You'll see down here, it has a recording of the webinar. It's going to be played from YouTube. It'll have the slides. It'll give you all the sponsor discounts, sponsor information, and then a link to all the resources that we used out here. So if you need to want to look them up from a scientific standpoint, you can do that. Uh, I do want to mention that this is part of a complete webinar series. And so I think it's something that uh, other seminars that are coming up next week, we're doing pain management. Then we're going to be doing um, uh, we're, then we're going to be doing uh, 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 cancer and chemotherapy and neuropathy. And then the day we do neuropathy, we're also going to have a in-person seminar at the villages. Um, that'll be in the morning, and I'll be doing the neuropathy webinar at night. Plus anxiety, stress, sleep, terpenes, and dosing. So there's a lot of interesting topics that are out there, and please feel free to join us. Um, and and during the webinar today, we're going to uh, have you be able to put in and ask your questions. There's a Q&A button kind of down over here. And what you want, please want to do is be able to click on that so that you'll be able to ask questions during the webinar. Uh, we also have a series of canned questions that were, uh, or I should say, questions that were submitted to us prior to the seminar when you registered, and we'll be answering those as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut over Lisa and I. Uh, videotape the actual content of this. We'll play this video, and then we're going to break into the question and answer qu series because I think a lot of people really want their questions answered, and that's one of the reasons why people come here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop my screen share. Lee, if you could start the video, that would be great. So Lisa, let's talk about arthritis and medical marijuana. Uh, I think in today's agenda, what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about uh, what is arthritis because I think it's important to define the problem that we're addressing as well as we're going to talk about how to improve 
on the symptoms from arthritis with medical cannabis. How do we make it? Does medical cannabis make it easier? Does it help you relieve a lot of the pain and inflammation that you get uh, in, with arthritis? And then we're going to talk about some of the patient's experiences that have been with it. Also, some of the research that's been done, because I think that's important to know that it's not something that just uh, happenstance. It's something that's been out there. And then we're going to talk about uh, the effective dosing and also which products to be used from uh, from your dispensary so that we know exactly which products will help with this particular, with this particular condition. So Lisa, let's talk about arthritis. I know that um, I am a sufferer of arthritis. I have uh, arthritis in my knees and just discovered I now have one in my finger and my finger is beginning to give me some issues. Um, and it really shows up as joint pain, redness, uh, minor swelling and sensations. Um, and some of the other conditions that are related to arthritis are things like fibromyalgia, uh, sim, uh, sim, uh, systematic lymphos, lymph, lupus, excuse me, systematic lupus, and injuries to the joints. Those are all issues that also are related to this. Now, Lisa, there's a couple of different types of arthritis. Why don't you tell me what they are? Yeah, so there are two main kinds. There's rheumatoid, arthri rheumatoid arthritis, and that's caused by an autoimmune disease. And what that disease does is, is it inflames the joints' interior linings, and that's where that pain is coming in because it's so inflamed, it's rubbing against each other, and that causes some permanent damage and over time even disability. So what's happening is the inflammation is causing the pain. And if we can yes. reduce the inflammation, hopefully it will reduce the pain. Is that correct? Exactly. Uh, and osteoarthritis is basically like wear and tear, where you have a loss of cartilage in the joints over time, um, specifically in those hands, hips, knees, spine, you know, where you're using, you know, the most parts of your body there. Uh, over time, it will break down. And osteoarthritis can appear. Yeah. And so it actually has the same symptoms. It, it basically, what happens is you're causing the the, the joints have become inflamed, and that's also causing a lot of the pain that's out there. Exactly. So we had a knee replacement, and that was because we lost a lot of the cartilage in my knee, and that caused that particular set of problems. Let's oh, yeah. Well, it's common. Well, Arthritis is very common. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Unfortunately, that's for sure. So, you know, what does, what does cannabis help with? Now, we know that <clears throat> there's a Canadian study that was done, and the Canadian researcher found out that one out of five people that they were brought into the study found out that they were using uh, using cannabis um, to help with the treatments. And fascinatingly enough, some of the results show that nine out of 10 um, people said it effectively managed their pain. Now that's important. For those of you, I know that I know that one of the things I worry about is pain. And I know that that's something that's very important with respect to why I use cannabis. And four out of 10 said it was able, they were able to get off pain medications by using medical cannabis. And that's of course something six out of 10 found that it was a lot more effective to use cannabis than any other medical drug that's out there. Now, this is a, a reported study that was done by Dennis Thompson, and it's something that's been published and fairly well known. It's in the Harvard Medical School of, of Publication. Also, the, the, the Arthritis Foundation found out some information. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that, Lisa, what, they, what their findings are? Yeah, well, the Arthritis Foundation, they were interested in knowing, you know, how many of these people out there who have arthritis are using cannabis products. And what they found was that almost 30% um, of people who have arthritis are using a CBD product, um, usually like a tincture or maybe like a lotion, uh, like a, any other kind of topical like that. And yeah, 80% of those respondents were either using CBD, had used it in the past, or were considering using it. And so CBD seems like a really popular option for those who have arthritis to maybe try out for the first time or to continue using if they find it to be effective. And most people do find that it's effective. It improved both their physical function, you know, their ability to sleep and just overall well-being. Uh, yeah, and, you know, some hard to get a good night's sleep if you're in pain. Oh, you know, absolutely. It's, and it's hard to be in a good mood if you're in pain. And so just that overall well-being is going to increase when that, you know, pain decreases. Right. And I know that the majority, you know, a, a minority of people reported improvement in both the pain and also significance, which is important. So we have studies that are out there that show that it worked. Um, now, let's talk about what it cannot do. Um, what it can't do is it's not going to cure arthritis. It's not a cure for it. Uh, it's not going to reverse the arthritic process. In other words, it's not going to re de rebuild depleted cartridge. And also what's really important is you're not going to die from a fatal overdose of using cannabis. Nobody has died from ever using medical cannabis. It's safe. Uh, and that's what's really, really important. A lot of the pharma drugs that you take, especially for a lot of the uh, inflammation 
type of products, you read the label really carefully, they have the, the famous, you know, could cause death. All right. And I think that's what's really important. One of the reasons why a lot of people turn to medical cannabis is because of the safety that's there. So we know it's not going to cure it, not going to reverse it, but tell me what it can do. Well, it's going to mitigate a lot of the nastier symptoms is one thing that cannabis can really do. And so it's going to reduce the level of pain that the user is experiencing and reducing inflammation is probably one of the big ways that it's going to reduce that pain. Uh, you know, CBD and CBD um, when paired with THC can be a very effective anti-inflammatory. And so by reducing that inflammation, reducing that pain, and by reducing that pain, we're increasing the overall health. And, you know, when you're feeling healthier, when you're feeling more like yourself, that's definitely going to help with anxiety and stress. Right, exactly. And that, that's really important. Both get, get rid of not only just the pain, but your anxiety and stress from it. That, that's an important feature that's mm -hmm. out there. Now, I'm going to make a point today, and it's really important. When you reduce inflammation, you reduce pain. And that's what a lot of the problems that we have with our body, not just with arthritis, but other, other conditions, are really related to that. We are these inflamed creatures that by being able to reduce the inflammation has been able to help us in a lot of different ways. And I think that's important to point out, not just with arthritis, but also with other conditions that we'll be talking about in this well in our series. Now, um, how effective is it? Well, I, I tend to turn to a couple of reliable sources. One of them is one called PubMed. And PubMed is where all the articles on, and publications for all the studies are done by the National Institute of Health. So this is where doctors, this is where your doctor would go in order to be able to find information about a particular condition and the treatments for it. And I'm not going to go through each and every one of these that are out there. You'll see that what they really found is, for example, researchers have found that CBD is, is safe and, and it's a useful treatment for OA. It's, a re, re, it's something that researchers have found that the topical applications help quite a bit with arthritis. I know it works for me. And not only does PubMed be able to produce and publish a lot of these articles, but also there's a group called Americans for Safe Access who did a report in 2020 on cannabis. And what they found out was it demonstrated the ability to improve your mobility, reduce morning sickness and inflammation. So all the studies that we're running into, both wide open studies in PubMed, as well as specific studies by groups like SAFE uh, have been able to find this out. I think this is really important. There is science behind this. It's not yes. just something that came off, uh, came off the street. And not only is there science, but there's a number of people that if you talk to them, They'll tell you that. I know that when we first started doing um, these medical marijuana awareness seminars, uh, we did them at the villages. And uh, now this was done a couple of years ago. So Nana is actually right now about 90 years old. And, and um, she's had RA, rheumatoid arthritis, for a number of years. She was so um, arthritic that she had did not have the ability to open up her hands. She did not have the ability to, so that didn't, she was very uncomfortable going out to dinner and eating, dining in public or being with people. She had a problem with the remote control uh, on her TV. And she was, became almost a recluse because of, because of this. Um, we had met her uh, through some sources that helped us in the villages. We put her on medical cannabis uh, to see if that would help. And because she was, her husband was very much against it, the pop pop of what they call them, uh, was actually against that. She didn't want to become uh, hyped up on drugs and things like that. What she ended up finding out was she, she got her daily pain started going down. Her inflammation started going down. Things like she was able to then open up her hands after a couple of weeks and be able to hold the fork, be able to hold the remote control. In fact, she got to a point where she was able to not only do that, you can see down here, she's playing cards with her friends. Um, she was actually going out on the golf course again, which I just- Nice. She actually got her life back. Yes. Um, and it's really, really interesting because here's someone who had gone her whole life under the umbrella of cannabis is a drug and it's not going to be good for you. And she found out that nothing was further than the truth. It's not a drug. It's a, it's a, a plant that acts as a medicine. And it was something that basically helped her not only get her life back, but also be able to enjoy the life that she really wanted. And she didn't have to be a recluse anymore. And she's actually fairly active right now, which I find very, very interesting. Now, this, oh, that's is wonderful. Study. this is just somebody that I knew, but I think it's something important to point out. And you've probably run into situations like this in your training. Is that correct? Oh, absolutely. Not only in my training, but in my personal day to day. My my own mother had a knee surgery a couple of years back. 
And she's very similar to Nana in that she was very uh, weary <laughs> of trying anything with cannabis in it because she thought that it might, you know, make her a bad person or, you know, and all of that stigma that sort of floats around it. But after some education, which I think is like the big piece that is missing uh, when people feel that way, after some education, she was willing to try a topical, a lotion on her knee, and not only did it help her, but she was one of those six out of 10 people that you mentioned earlier who actually stopped taking the prescribed medication that she was, she was tolerating, you know, the cannabis side effects way easier. And so, yeah, I see it every day in the patients who walk into our stores, and I see it when I go visit my mom. <laughs> it's interesting because a lot of people will ask me, is this real? And in many cases, I've, I've used medical cannabis with my mom, who has a very similar situation. Mm -hmm. so, so what's the big deal with cannabis? Why does cannabis work? Well, I, I think it's important to point out that since we, since we grew up, when we, we first started becoming conscious, we heard about something called the nervous system. We heard that if we, we bang our finger, we, we, get, we hurt ourselves, we have intestinal problems. Our nervous system tells our brain, Houston, we have a problem with this particular area. And that's, that's how our body communicates. I look at the nervous system as being the cell phone system of the body, that one part of the body communicates with the other part of the body, mainly through the brain, that says we have problems. Now, what I found absolutely fascinating when I got into cannabis space is that we studied, meaning Western medicine studied the nervous system for a long, long time. And yet they didn't, when Houston had a problem, what did Houston do with it? They never researched that, which I found to be uh, rather striking. But anyway, we found out that when we, when we started doing research in the medical cannabis, more importantly, when the US government started funding research in the medical cannabis in 1964, which by the way, they started in 1964, and we still, the US government, meaning, meaning your money and my money, is funding research in the medical cannabis We've been doing that since 1964 through Ben Gurion University and the University of Jerusalem with Dr. Raphael Mershulam. They've he discovered what they call an endocannabinoid system, and this is a system that in our body produces endocannabinoids. That when we have a problem, the nervous system says problem, produces endocannabinoids, and sends that to that part of the body to be able to help, help us get into what we call homeostasis or to basically manage the health problems that we have. This is a system that re regulates pain anxiety, memory, appetite, inflammation, all the immune systems that are out there, I find it to be very interesting that, that we've really found this. And what's, what's even more interesting when it comes in this, that why does it work? Because our body produces natural endocannabinoids. And what's interesting is they found out these phytocannabinoids, which is the can cannabinoids that are produced in the cannabis plant, are identical in structure and also function to the endocannabinoids which is a nice way of saying that if we're endocannabinoid deficient in certain areas, if we need more of these to be able to address this particular situation that we're, our lifestyle altering medical condition, cannabis in our body can help us do that. And you might say, well, why would I do that? Fundamentally, because um, I'm a senior citizen and I can tell you over the age of, of 50, 55, your body isn't producing as many endocannabinoids as it did when I was younger. And also it doesn't produce them as fast as it needs. By being able to put phytocannabinoids in my body, in essence, what I'm doing is phytocannabinoids are stored in the uh, fatty acids. What we're doing is we're basically just like, a, think of it like a battery. We're storing, we're charging that battery so that if we do have a problem, your body has the resources it needs to be able to address that particular condition. And that's really the magic of cannabis. And that's what we've discovered that's out there. What's really even fascinating, and this is something I think you found here at INSA, is that cannabis is a whole medicine cabinet. In other words, it has over 450 medical properties. It has 120 cannabinoids and it has 100 terpenes. Now, those are the ones that we're studying. I know there's over 200 cannabinoids that have now been found and over 200 terpenes that are out there. And we'll talk about what terpenes are and we'll talk about the cannabinoids in a minute. But basically, by putting all those together, we get something called the entourage effect. This is where one and one is three. By working together, what ends up happening is you get more relief from inflammation from the pain by using the CBD and THC together. So, and by the way, on the right-hand side here, these are the different cannabinoids that we find in the cannabis plant. It's not just one cannabinoid. As I mentioned, there's over 120 of them that we know about today. And then over here is, in the, this is a study that was done or, or published, I should say, by Normal on all the different conditions that cannabis addresses, which is fascinating. 
I know it's it's funny. A lot of people think it's all just THC, but there's so much more to the plant than just that one compound. Sure, sure. And that, that's something really important to point out because THC and it, it and THC and you both address the CB1 and CB2 receptors. CB1 mainly handles a lot of the medical and psychoactive effects. CB2 regulates inflammation, your immune system, you know, basically your nervous system really ties to that. But over the last two years, there's been a number of research studies that found out that CBD does more than just address the CB1 and CB2 receptors. They're, they're not going to get technical on it, medically technical on this, but I just want to let people know that there's a, there's a, here, there's a 2A, there's an A2A inflammation, uh, A, A2A receptor that function points to helping with inflammation in coronary circulation. Now that's important. What is, what's it help with coronary circulation? It helps with diabetes, what I'm trying to point out. It helps with blood pressure. It helps with the body temperature. And look at the VR1, that's pain. Two of the key components that we're trying to manage with arthritis, which is inflammation and pain, is being addressed by CBD. And by the way, with a little bit of THC, it actually activates and makes it a lot, lot stronger that's out there. Not to mention um, the other, the other, the, the, uh, the serotonin receptors, which are really good for regulating our digestive system and blood flow. And breathing. So there's a number of things that we know CBD and THC do. I look at CBD as like a, a super vitamin. You know, it's like it's like the ultimate vitamin you can put into your body. And I think, I personally believe. Anybody over the age of 55 should be taking this because your body just needs a little help to be able to manage itself. Uh, this is a list of all the different different cannabinoids and each of the receptors that it ties to. And I really don't want to drive too much down on this. I just want people to know that there's been research done right down to the cannabinoid level as to what works and what doesn't work to help with different parts of the body. And we know that there's science behind this. This is not something that just it's more than just Nana saying everything's working great. We know there's science research that it's really out there. So one of my favorite subjects, uh, Lisa, terpenes. Now we hear about we hear a lot about strains. People talk about the different strains, but really the medical benefit to cannabis comes from the terpenes. The terpenes actually affect what condition will be treated by cannabis. Is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, one way that I like to describe it is that. Terpenes sort of decide what different personalities the different strains and cultivars have. And so there are some strains of cannabis that'll make you really energized and ready to go, go, go. And there are some strains of cannabis that'll make you feel really at home on the couch, watching a movie and really relax those muscles. And the terpenes are what's going to decide, it's what's going to decide those different personalities. And if you're looking for something that's going to help you with inflammation and help you with pain, THC and CBD are certainly great attributes, but there's a lot that the terpenes can offer you as well. And so if you're looking for a strain of cannabis to try, you know, the linalool, myrcene, and karyophyllene trio right there actually is a really good one to look at. You know, linalool is really um, amazing at anti-inflammatory properties, and myrcene and karyophyllene have both been shown to help with pain um, and just relax muscle tension. And so, like, if you're looking at, you know, what maybe you should try and, you know, what terpene profiles might be best for you, look for those big three there. And that will probably be a really great place to at least start. Right. And those are found, those are, these are all, although there are over uh, 100 terpenes right now being studied, over 200 of them have been found. These are the main ones that you find in cannabis today. These are the ones you're looking for. If you are suffering from arthritis and you go to a dispensary, ask them for a product that has little myrcene and caryophyllene in it. They might call it beta caryophylline, but caryophylline is what you're really looking for. Those are the main ones that are there. And I do want to point out the eucalyptol is also very good over here for an anti-inflammatory. And also piney over here. And you might say, gee, those names sound familiar because these are very similar to essential oils. And there's a lot of the things that we find in nature. Piney has the smell and the aroma of pine needles. Um, eucalyptol is that minty eucalyptus smell. Caryophylline is that peppery smell. Myrcene is that fruity smell. Um, mangoes and, and oranges and things. Uh, Linalol is, is lavender. So these are the really essential things. Most important, when you're at a dispensary looking for a product, tell them you're looking for something with linalol, myrcene, and caryophylline. 
And we'll give you some strains that are out there, but we kind of pre-selected some of the strains that have those in there. And you see that in this one right here. So here's the recommended strains that are out there that you see that the, here's the, what they call the dominant strains. And you can see that we're kind of pointing to those particular terpenes to recommend the, the products that, that are here. Now, some people like, um, some people like uh, high THC products and some people prefer to have the high CBD products. And that's why there's a, a, an ACDC over here. So there's a number of different products that are out there. And I think uh, at, you have some, at INSA, you have some additional ones as well. Is that right? We do. And we're always looking into um, researching and developing for our strains. And so not only seeing what else is out there that we can maybe add to our library, but creating our own, seeing if there's two different strains that look like the combination of them would make something really special. We, we do a lot of that at INSA. It's very important that you talk to the person behind the counter because they've been highly trained. Tell them you're looking for caryophylline, myrcene, and linoleum, and they'll help you directly for the actual products that are there that can really help you. Yeah. The, what's, what's crazy is these names, although they're industry standards, um, everybody's got their own names, and that's what makes it kind of interesting. Now, the question is, how do you take it? So you decided, let's, let's try cannabis. The question is, how do you start and do that? And I think really the, the best way to start, in my opinion, is with some lingual drops that, that are over here by putting some underneath your tongue and being able to help you. Is that correct? So, but how long, how long is it when you, when I take it, how long, how long is it before it starts working and how long does it work? Yeah, for most people, it takes about 15 to 30 minutes for a tincture to be absorbed into the body. Some people a little bit less, some people a little bit more. You know, everybody is unique and, you know, reacts to these products uniquely. Uh, and yeah, sublinguals are a really great product to try, especially if you're looking to avoid inhalation. And so if you're a little wary of trying something that's smoked or vaporized, then a sublingual is going to work quickly for you like those methods would, but obviously you don't need to inhale anything into your lungs. And so that is a very popular way to try out cannabis for the first time for many patients. Yeah, it's kind of easy. It's kind of the best way to start. And it's important to point out, <clears throat> this will last for four to six hours. Now, if you have arthritis to the point where it's constant, you may need to take something in the morning. You may need to take something in the middle of the afternoon. And you may need to take something in the evening. I have a situation where I'm dealing with uh, herniated discs in my neck. I have seven of them. They're not going to go away. And so I need to have a regime that addresses the inflammation in that three times a day. Otherwise, if I kind of take a day off or so, um, they'll let you know that they're there and they'll start hurting again. And so it's something that you have to have on coverage. That's correct. Now, besides sublingual, for arthritis, you've got some great topical products, right? Yes. Well, they haven't been released just yet, but they're going to be released so, so soon. Um, but yes, we do have some topical products that we have in Massachusetts that are so popular to help with pain, to help with inflammation. And we ho we're hoping to have those in Florida in the next few weeks, actually. And so keep keep an eye out. We're going to be having topicals in Florida really, really soon. OMMU stands for Office of Medical Marijuana Use. And so the state of Florida just verifies all the uh, research that's been done. And again, you should have it out in the next week or two. We were kind of hoping it would be done for this webinar. And it may be by the time we actually do all the, all the, the finish the broadcasting and send out the final information. From it. So I think topical is really important. I use topical for, I just started noticing I had some arthritis in my in my fingers. And obviously typing on the keyboard is something that becomes an issue. I use a topical for that and it works out great. So I would say um, use it, but you want to use a what they call a transdermal, is that correct? Oh uh, well transdermal is usually going to refer to a patch. Mm -hmm. um, and so there is something called a transdermal patch. And that's mm -hmm. like um, those icy hot patches that you see at like CVS, mm -hmm. where you apply them to the area that's feeling discomfort and it will release the cannabinoids into your bloodstream. Now, the difference between a transdermal patch and a lotion and a salve is that that doesn't get released into your bloodstream the same way. And so the transdermal is referring to the fact that it's penetrating the dermal layer. It's going beneath that to deposit the cannabinoids into the bloodstream. And so you could potentially get some sort of psychoactive um, you know, feeling yeah, from that. Yeah. Right. But if you're looking for no psychoactive feeling, then a topical such as a lotion or a salve would be a really great option for you. So it depends on what you're looking for. Yeah. 
Now, one of the things that I hear a lot about, which I love, is people say, let's go do the gummies. Let's go do the oral side of it over here, which is the side that we see down over here. And, and I love it because, look, edibles, orals, gummies, they're very – capsules are very – chocolates are very effective. I'm a chocoholic. I take uh, a little square of chocolate before I go to bed every night. But um, <clears throat> the good news is uh, it lasts 4 to 10 hours. So I found it to be very effective to help me sleep through the night. The bad news is it can take up to two hours to work. I mean, we have kind of a saying in this business that just about the time you think it's not working and you take that other one, it works, start working. Um, and so it, it really is more of a 30 minutes to two hour um, um, time to be able to have that work. And, and again, orals refer, refer to not only edibles, gummies, uh, chews, that type of thing, but also capsules, which you might take. It's a very, very effective way of using it. But I always tell people that are looking at heading into using the different orals, be very, very careful, okay, of what you're doing. Because you want to you want to go low, you want to go slow, and give it some time, give it an hour or two to really work before you go take another one. And that requires a lot of patience. Not a lot of people do that. Now I'm gonna also say at instant, you've got some very tempting chocolates and chews. Is that correct? That that help you. We do. Our chocolate is made with real, authentic, imported European chocolate. And so I'm also a chocoholic. And so that's my favorite edible that we create. But we also, if you're more into like the fruit flavored things, we also do have some really amazing fruit flavored drops as well. Yeah. So it's something that, and because they're so good, they're very tempting. But these are not like um, M&Ms that you want to pop. I mean, these are things that you got to be very, very careful with. But they work very effectively. And I know, and also they can be very portable. You can keep it in a purse, you can, you can keep it in your, in, in your pocket and take it around. So that's that's really, really effective. Now, of course, there's the whole, whole side of it of flour and inhalers and vape pens and concentrates, um, which is a lot of people, if you like smoking cannabis, it's, it's, this is the way to go. Um, I do want to point out, a lot of people feel that when, I, when you light that joint, and I've heard people tell me, well, I'll just smoke a joint and it'll, it'll take care of the problem. When you take that joint and you light that, you light it, put that flame up there, that 500 degree temperature flame burns off 50% of the cannabinoids, all of the terpenes, and all the flavonoids. So what you're doing is you're essentially removing a lot of the medical properties of that cannabis by smoking that joint. That's the bad news. The good news is it's still effective. You know, I find it amazing that there's not very few things that you can run, you can run that engine at 40% of its capacity, and it's still effective. But I think that if you can take that and you can also take that, that, that flower and be able to capture the, the terpenes and, and, the, and, the, um, and the flavonoids, it would be so much, so much more effective. Hence why they developed concentrates so that you can take and you can put it into a, a, a little, like a wax or a butter or something like that, put it into a concentrate pen and you'll be able to use it. And also you make your own pens. So you can actually, you've actually pre-done that with some of your, your vape pens, is that correct? Yeah, so if you know if you if you don't want to necessarily be choosing your own concentrates and you just don't have a pen or a rig or anything, something like this is perfect because everything you need is in one little unit. And so you just pop on there and you're gonna be good to go. And talk about convenient and portable. There's not much that's more convenient and portable than a vaporizer. They're really easy to carry along with you and they have very little smell to them. And and it works immediately. I mean, one of the things I found is that when I wake up in the morning because of the herniated discs in my neck, and now because of my little finger that's uh, deciding to let me know that arthritis is uh, now attacking my body, uh, I can actually have a vape pen on my on my counter on my um, nightstand. First thing I do when I get up is I take a quick hit off of that. And literally immediately, my pain will go down to below a one. And and when that happens, like sometimes it'll be as high as a seven or an eight. The first time that happens, it's always amazing to me that, that happens. But it's, it's fascinating. It's incredible for sure. Right away. But that'll, that'll stop working after, for me, about two hours. So that's why I take the tincture drops right after that, because by that time, by the time it starts wearing down, the oral, the, the tinctures, the uh, sublinguals kick in, and I'm able to take myself through the morning into the early afternoon to be able to help them. Out. Yeah, well, that's one thing that's really excellent about cannabis is that you can really personalize your routine. If you need something mostly in the morning, then you can find a product that's going to really help you in the morning. If you need something that's going to be all day, then, you know, you can do what you do and make a little routine for yourself where you have a puff first thing and then have a chocolate and then later on apply some topical and, you know, whatever works for you, you can customize it. It's, it's really cool that way. Sure. 
So what I'm trying to point out is it's not just black and white. You can try different, different ways and something that really personalizes it to your lifestyle, what you're comfortable doing. Some people don't mind in hand, some people do. Some people are, really have something about sublinguals. The only thing I, the only one I'll be very careful about is be very careful with the orals. Okay, don't go wolfing down a half a chocolate bar of, of, of cannabis. Um, you, you, you can, you're not gonna kill you. Um, you'll feel real good. Okay, everybody has different reactions to it, but just be careful with that one as far as the medication that's out there. So let's talk about the resources that people can use to be able to, to get into medical cannabis. First of all, one of the main resources is INSA. You have your dispensaries here in Florida, is that correct? We do, we have five in Florida, about to open up another one any day now. And we also have a really robust customer service department. And so we have a customer service department that's open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. every single day. So if you're curious about cannabis or you have a question about a product on a menu or even about you know getting your medical card and you want somebody to help walk you through that, if you give us a call at you know 1-888-500-INSA, or just go to insa.com and chat with us there, we can walk you through pretty much any part of the cannabis journey for you. And by the way, as you mentioned earlier, we're gonna send you a follow-up email to this webinar. We'll send you all the contact information for INSA, and I think we'll also send you the locations where INSA is located at. I know you're in Tampa, you're in Orlando. Um, I know you're in- Clearwater, Orlando. Hudson. <laughs> Good, there you go. It's there. The other is a lot of people ask the question, where do I get just CBD by itself? And that's not something that's in, in INSA's wheelhouse because you mainly sell THC rich products. So we have a product site we put together called My Botanical Wellness. And really this is where we had, because we worked with Med MMTC of Florida for people to get their medical marijuana cards, the question became, if you use CBD while you're, you, while you're dosing, you can actually, if you start getting higher, you start feeling not feeling well, you can actually add some CBD or take some CBD and we'll bring you back down to where you were before. Where do you get the quality CBD products? And that's why we produce the My Botanical Wellness website to be able to allow you to be able to pick up products in the way. And naturally, if you want to get your card, that medical marijuana treatment for clinics of Florida, that goes to that. Um, and this is a little bit about the My Botanical Wellness. Uh, first time buyers get a 20% discount, patients get 10% discounts. Lisa, you have a bunch of discounts as well, right? We sure do. Um, we have a lot of new patient discounts. Um, we have compassion discounts, veterans discounts, and we have lots of promotions going on. Uh, so come check us out. Come, go to our website. That's the best thing. Go to our website, sign up to be an Insta Insider, and you get special uh, emails that nobody else gets telling you about what's going on. You sort of become a um, an insider, you know, someone behind the curtain. And so, yeah, that's the best way to see the newest stuff that's coming out from us. And we'll send everybody a list of all the discounts that come from this part of the email. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah best loyalty great. program in the state. So if you're a frequent shopper, definitely come to INSA. <laughs> I know one of the things is our senior citizens get 10% discount, right? Sure do. Yep. Yeah, I fall into that kind of way. Veterans as well. Yep. <laughs> And of course, if you do uh, with my botanical wellness, we have a ten percent discount for well treatments there as well. So let's uh, let's wrap this up a little bit because I do we do want to get on to the questions that people are asking. I do want to shamelessly say plug our webinars coming up next week will be uh, pain management. Then we're going to do a couple of new ones on cancer and chemotherapy as well as neuropathy. We're going to do another in person uh, seminar at the villages on the twenty second of February. And by the way, that is the same day as a neuropathy uh, webinar. The web, neuropathy webinar is at, seven, at 6 o'clock at night. Uh, the web seminar is in the morning. Then we're going to do anxiety, stress, sleep, terpenes, and dosing. So there's a lot of different um, uh, subjects coming up that can address many different conditions that you might want to take a look at and really dive down in the uh, And also, I want to ask people, if you have a medical cannabis story, if you've used me me medical marijuana, Please go to I, IGMLB, that stands for I Got My Life Back, and get, tell us your medical marijuana story. A lot of people really want to hear from other people as to what's going on. And I've had a number of people get a hold of me and say, let me tell you how it's worked for me, how great it is, or, or how, 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 how it, it hasn't worked very well for me. And so what I want to be able to do is start publishing these stories and let them, let them come out there. So please join that site, IGMLB.com. So I think we covered what arthritis is. We covered the symptoms. We covered the patient experience. We covered dosing and we covered the products 
Um, why don't we kind of wrap up this video and then we jump into the questions? How does that sound? Sounds wonderful. Great. Lisa, thank you. So let's let's uh, let's go into that. So hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, Lisa, we can kind of jump into some questions now and be able to drive down to them. What I want to do first, though, if you don't mind, is I would like to answer some of the questions that came in during the video. I think that's something that's important. Let's start there. So the first one that came in, it says, Lisa uh, from Anonymous, when are you going, when when do you get into Long Island in Southwest Pennsylvania? Because I think you're in both New York and also Pennsylvania, right? Yeah, well, we're looking into New York. We haven't, you know, opened up any facilities there just yet, but it's definitely something that's on our radar, but mm -hmm. we are available in Pennsylvania. So we don't have any of our own retail stores in Pennsylvania, but our products are available in over a hundred different dispensaries in the state. Mm -hmm. And so if you're looking for an Insta product, chances are a dispensary near you has some for you. Uh, and we can even, you know, if you call our customer service line, one 500 insa that was a question before, our customer service people can walk you through on where to find what products. Yeah, I think it's important to point out that each state has its own medical marijuana program. Yes. And uh, for example, here in Florida, they have what they call a vertical program, which means that people like INSA dispensaries, like INSA have to grow it, process it, package it, um, have the retail stores to be able to sell it. So it's all, all vertically integrated into one, one area. In other states like Pennsylvania, it's horizontal. So anyone can open up a store. And then what happens is in that particular case, INSA sells the product to the, uh, to the store and then it's available in the store itself. So you're actually you're actually in those particular stores. So if you're in those particular geographic locations and you have a dispensary near you, ask them if they have an Insta product. And candidly, if they don't, ask them to carry it. Probably yes. not a bad idea. It's out there. Uh, Joan, you had a good question. And that was, uh, why was the B12 seminar canceled? We had a situation where the speaker for the B12 seminar had a family personal issue that came up that would prevent him from presenting. So what we did was we just made the decision to um, to not have the webinar. We want to have a quality webinar that's out there. We will repeat that one. We will do it next quarter. We'll probably do it the first week of April, just to give you an idea. And that's with the tentative date that's out there, because that's a very important uh, subject. And I, I personally have started using B12 in the last quarter, and it's made a huge energy boost uh, to me. So I think it's something that we want definitely want to get out there and have people begin to look at. Um, one of the Zoom, ask, Zoom users asked, does it help with the joint? My medical mineral goddess doctor said you need something else for your joint to protect them. Um, well, I don't know what your medical marijuana doctor is referring to. I do know that uh, cannabis, uh, both THC especially and also CBD, have what they're, they're what they call neural protectors, which means they put a, they give a coating on the receptors that really help them. And that's one of the reasons why, for example, in the case of cancer. It helps to uh, it helps to mitigate the cancer issues. So I, I don't think you need something else. You may need to pay attention to the type of uh, product you use, meaning what type of terpenes are in the product, because they will have a direct uh, direct correlation to the issue of protecting the joints. But I think if you're using a quality CBD that has the caryophylline, myrcene, and linalool uh, combination, or or other products that other terpenes in there with those. Uh, it should be able, you shouldn't really need anything else. Not that I'm aware of. Lisa, have you ever heard of that? Um, no, I haven't. And I'm just wondering if maybe he was referring to like other parts of his life in terms of protecting the joint. So or right. like, you know, balanced diet, exercise, things like that. Right. Now, Anonymous asked a great question. And that is, um, how long do you need to consume cannabis before you feel in, before you feel less inflammation? Uh, do you need to take it every day in order to have it work and which type of cannabis works best? Uh, I'm going to leave the which cannabis works best because I think we covered that in the presentation. But if you have inflammation that's in your in your joints, uh, what's interesting is um, uh, I I found that it, it it since it took a while for the inflammation to get there, it may take anywhere from three days to five days before you feel less inflammation. Some people feel it right away. Some people feel it in a day or two. Some people it takes, I know that some people with arthritis, I know my aunt took it who had a terrible case of arthritis and it took her almost three weeks before the inflammation got, got to a point where she was actually feeling very comfortable and being able to get 
uh, somewhat of her life back, a lot of her, a lot of her, her movement back. So it really depends on your body, and it depends on how long you've been suffering from it. But I would say give it at least a week to ten days. I think you'll definitely find a lot less inflammation. And candidly, when that happens, you'll feel so much better. Um, do you take it every day? And the answer is absolutely. Um, cannabis is like a vitamin pill. And what's interesting is that if you notice when we were talking about routes of administration, we talked about, for example, tinctures taking anywhere between uh, 15 to 30 minutes to work. In my case, it takes about 20 minutes and it works between four to six hours. And in my case, it works about four hours. So after four hours, it stops working. So what happens is the inflammation comes back. I was talking to a patient last night who said, gee, this is really great. I take it in the morning and in, in, all, in the morning it feels great. And then in the evening, I'm having a problem again. And my question was, did you take another cannabis regime in the evening? And the answer was no. And so what's happening is the, the medication that you need is actually out, worn off or out of your body, been used by your body. So it's something that you need to take a look at. If it's a, if it's a case, like in my case, I have inflamed, uh, I have uh, herniated discs in my neck and they're inflamed. I have to take it in the morning, I take it in the early afternoon, and I take it in the evening. And candidly, I take it. I take a, a piece of chocolate, uh, as I mentioned in the seminar, our webinar uh, piece. I take a little piece of chocolate not in the evening, not only to help me reduce the inflammation that's there, but also to help me sleep, because it'll last for 10 hours in my particular case, which gets me through the night. Now, have you have any comments on that, Lisa? No, um, you know, that's definitely something that we see very often at NSA mm -hmm. is that, you know, eventually if you find that cannabis works for you, then the next step is to start building that routine, you know, finding out, do you need something a little bit different in the morning versus in the evening? Mm -hmm. And do you want to maybe start off with something a little stronger first thing in the morning and then switch off to something a little bit lighter in THC to keep your, you know, mind clear headed. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I say with cannabis that it's a double-edged sword. You know, on one hand, there can be some confusion because there's so many different products to choose from. But on the other hand, there's so many different products to choose from. And so there's going to be very likely something that is going to fit your routine and fit your needs that you're looking for. And that's where not only the, your, uh, your medical marijuana doctor, your cannabis practitioners like myself, and then also people that are working with the behind the counter at the, at the, um, at the dispensaries can help you quite a bit. Um, Absolutely. Carolyn asked the question, can you repeat the numbers you gave uh, and walk us through that you gave when you walk us through the journey? Um, what number? What is that number again to reach you? one 500 insa Or if you just go to insa.com, the number will be listed there for you, or you can live chat with us. I hope that I hope that helps, Carolyn. And you'll also get an email as a follow up to this. It'll give you that information as well. So hopefully that, that takes care of that. Anonymous asked a great question, and that's what is a terpene? And um, I think we have actually we have a webinar at the end of March on terpenes. And if you're interested in them, it's very important. This is probably the most important part of cannabis. The cannabis plant itself, all plants have a, a certain kind of terpenes that are in there. What terpenes are is they are protective agents, when, you, when the plant is growing, it protects itself by producing terpenes. So what do terpenes do? It gives the plant, plant for, if so, animals or insects or um, some other, other, other plants that typically attack and try to kill or, or damage the, the cannabis plant itself, the terpenes are there to protect it. Now, they're very similar to um, what they, when you, you take a look at um, uh, essential oils, it's the same type of thing. Those are all based on terpenes. So the terpenes in the plant keep the animals from eating it, keep the other plants from particularly hurting it, uh, actually give it the, 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 the hardiness that it needs. So if it gets tough weather, or if it gets cold or warm, it protects the plant for that. So that's what the terpenes are. They're protectants that are in the plant. And what's interesting is when you process them, they actually have medical properties. And that's what makes cannabis so amazing is that Normally, when you look at a plant, you'll find 5, 20, maybe 15, maximum 40 terpenes. Cannabis has 100 terpenes that we know, of, actually about 200 that we know of, but 100 of them that are being studied. It finds it to be very, very interesting that's this there. Um, thank you very much, uh, Lee, for putting this up. You can see there's a lot of different terpenes that are out there, but they work with the CBD and the THC to really help you be able to bring out 
um, the right properties that are there. Terpenes have a profile, just like the strains at themselves. And what's interesting is you have, for example, the ones that are mainly, the main ones for uh, arthritis are linalool, you can see here, are myrcene and caryophylline. And I think that we had a slide up earlier that showed the different strains that were out there. They were very, we had the dominance of, of caryophylline and myrcene, and those really help quite a bit with, with, uh, with inflammation. And also that inflammation helps with pain. Now, I've had situations where people come to me and say, I use medical cannabis and it doesn't work. And the problem that they are running into is the product that you're working may not have the terpene profile you need to address your particular situation. And that's, that's where coming into play where, you know, Lisa mentioned there's a number of different products out there. We need to have you try a different product. Lee, uh, Lee thank you very much for putting this up. What's interesting about the main strains that work for arthritis is look at the, look at the high over here, most of them oh, down here, look at the amount of CBD to THC, very high in CBD, because a lot of the problem with inflammation is what's causing your pain and causing the problem with arthritis. If you can lower lower that down, it helps quite a bit. Now, someone asked the question, how long do you take it? Well, I had my automobile accident about five years ago, and I had I had uh, I had a, I had a lot of mobility problems. And I have to come back and tell you that today, by being able to use cannabis literally for five years, I've recovered probably almost ninety five percent to where I was before the accident. And that has to do with a lot of the, the, the inflammation going down. I also have to tell you that I usually take every uh, six or eight weeks, I take a day or two off of cannabis. I stopped using it for a day or two. And the reason I do that is because my body, which normally produces endocannabinoids, since I'm supplying phytocannabinoids, which are in a session, essentially endocannabinoids, my body is seeing that it's getting the endocannabinoids and it can become lazy. It can say, hey, I don't have to produce this. Uh, I'll just I'll just wait for wait for him to take some, some products. So by being able to lay off for a day or two, what it does is it gives me my body, it kind of wakes it up and says, well, you really can't sit on the sit on the beach and do this. You got to kind of go to work. Now, most doctors, medical cannabis doctors and practitioners will recommend that you take uh, three to four days off. I cannot. After about a day, my neck uh, literally taps my shoulder and says, buddy, if you don't do something pretty quick, you're going to be in that level of seven, eight, or nine pretty quickly. So I don't have the luxury of being able to do that. I'm not addicted to cannabis. I can stop cannabis at any point in time. I don't have a, I don't have a burning desire to, to use it all the time. I have a burning desire to get rid of my pain all the time. And I think there's a, there's a difference between the two. And so I use cannabis on a daily basis to be able to basically get my life back and what's over there. Mm -hmm. um, People ask, what's the best medical, what's the best medical, what's the best, what's the best marijuana treatment for glaucoma? Well, it works the same as, um, as arthritis. Uh, it depends on you and your body. Again, I would start with the tinctures and see how they work. I know, and I'll use my mother as an example. My mother, uh, uh, about five years ago, was diagnosed with uh, cancer. And uh, the doctors wanted to do mastectomies. They wanted to do radiation, chemo. I basically said, no, my mother was 88 years old at the time. And I said, mom, if you do that, if the, if the uh, radiation and chemo don't get you, the, the operation will. So we started using medical cannabis. Now, mom is alive today. She's doing well. She's like the Energizer Bunny. Um, and she, but interesting is she was treating it for cancer. But when she went to the glaucoma doctor, her glaucoma was gone. Because that goes to that entourage effect. Your body knows what the problem is, doesn't need a doctor to tell you, and it'll produce the endocannabinoids from the phytocannabinoids going into her body that treats her glaucoma. So right now she's actually um, handling two problems with, with using medical cannabis, uh, her cancer, and also um, glaucoma that's out there. Um, what strain is good for uh, the der derivator? Oh, I don't know how to pronounce that word. I apologize for that. Um, and won't, and won't slow the bowel vowels down. Now, a lot of that, um, when it comes into the vowels and it comes into uh, the, 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 the main part of your body, the, the, the central part of your body, that has to do with your digestive system, your, your liver, your kidneys, uh, that part of your body. CBD is really, really good for that. Um, it's been known, like if you have IBS or something like that, CBD has been really good for it, but you have to have a little bit of THC in it. 
So it's a split, it's very similar to the treatment is very similar to arthritis. You need to have a CBD THC um, combination to do that. And candidly, many of the, um, the terpenes that we talked about earlier will work very well for that to be able to help this out there. Um, yeah, I would say especially look at um, carrier phylene or carophylline. Mm -hmm. That one is going to be a really good one to look at because there are certain receptors that live in your gastrointestinal tract and cariophylline actually does connect with those. And right. so we find that a lot of patients find some really good, you know, stomach and intestinal relief from products that are really high in cariophylline. Sure, sure. And I know that, and I know that, um, yeah, that, that it, it, again, that terpene profile is important. Yes. And when you, again, when you're, if you're looking at whether it's glaucoma or whether it's arthritis, please talk to the person behind the counter and please get the right terpene profiles. If you walk in and say, I'm looking for myrcene, uh, caryophylline, uh, I'm looking for linalool, they will be able to direct you to the products that have that particular terpene profile. And they'll be so happy. If you're coming into an INSA dispensary yeah. and you're asking for specific terpenes, they'll be so giddy to help you because they love talking terpenes and they love talking with patients who know what to look for, for sure. And one of the things I like about our relationship with INSA is you pay a lot of attention to terpenes. We do. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot on terpenes over the next three to four months as far as introducing some things that will help people. And I think it is a great partner. You pay attention to that. And that, that's probably the most important part of using medical cannabis is terpenes. Norma asked a great question. She's taking a 50-50. You're taking one-to-one -one THC CBD. Is this the good choice for arthritis? Well, if it's working for you, it's a good choice. But what I would do, um, I would actually try, now I would try a product that's a little bit higher in CBD to THC. In other words, I try a ratio of maybe two CBD to one THC and see how that works. Um, as you notice, some of the products that we put up had like nine to, nine to four or something like that. I think if you increase the amount of CBD, so if you use a product that's higher in CBD uh, than THC, I think you're going to find it's going to help you with your arthritis a lot better because you're putting more CBD into your body, which is giving your body more of the base component it needs, the phytocannabinoid it needs to turn it into the endocannabinoid cannabinoid to address your arthritis that's there. Your thoughts on that, Lisa? Yeah, I think that that's really good advice. Um, you know, ex exactly what you said, if it's working, then stick with it for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, going to a two to one ratio would probably be a, a good step, to, a good step right. to take. And I do just want to point out if you're on a dispensary website or you're looking at all these products and you're seeing these two to ones, 10 to ones, five to ones, and you're not sure which is to which, which is which, just keep in mind that CBD is always listed first. It's alphabetical. Mm -hmm. So if you see a product that's 10 to one, that means it has 10 times the amount of CBD to THC. And so mm -hmm. if you see like a two to one, that's twice as much CBD as THC. So always keep that in mind that the CBD will be listed first. Right. And I know I have I have a mom on a four to one right now, just to give you an idea, four, T, four CBD to one THC, nice. which, which is helping her quite a bit. Uh, nice. Joan asked about a dispensary in Southern Florida, and I know it's on your list. I don't know. You don't know when. I think it's something, I, but I do know that INSA is looking at Southern Florida, and I'll let you kind of pick that one up, Lisa. Let me see here. I got a little handy dandy list. Um, I don't know personally the geography of Florida all that well, but I can tell you some locations that we are going to be opening up um, this year. So we're looking to open up Lake Placid. Largo, uh, a location in a location by the Villages, Orlando, and um, and some other ones we're looking into. Orlando actually is already open. Um, so I'm not sure if any of those qualify as Southern Florida, but um, those are the ones we are looking to open up this year and, you know, in the future, probably expanding even further. So yeah, I've talked you know, to if you go to our website, if you go to insa.com and you type in your zip code, it will give you the location that's closest to you. Sure. And and you're, this is like a work in process. I know that you're planning to open up quite a few dispensaries here in Florida this year. Yes. So you, you uh, please stay tuned. I don't think that INSA is going to forget Southern Florida. Oh, no, definitely, will definitely be there. not. It's so beautiful there. down there. Why wouldn't we want a location down there? Yeah. And, and you know, Fort Lauderdale is a great location. So we'll see. We'll see that all pans out. I got to leave that up. To, I don't want to make any commitments or, uh, <laughs> but we'll definitely, definitely pass it on to the INSA folks. Um, For sure. so I think we've covered a lot of the questions that were brought up during the presentation. What I might want to do is take up, maybe we have some questions that were asked prior. I think why don't we, Lee, Lee I might want to go through one of those pages 
um, and just so that's there. Because um, I think it's important that we at least cover some of the questions that people asked us ahead of time. Uh, can medical marijuana prevent rheumatoid arthritis flare-ups? And the answer is yes. Lisa, do you want to talk about that or do you want me to take it? Yeah, well, you know, as we were discussing this entire, you know, deck and presentation is that a lot of times these flare-ups, uh, whether it's rheumatoid or osteoarthritis, is caused by, you know, an overabundance of inflammation. And so as long as you're taking control of your inflammation and you are, you know, making sure that you're doing it every day, like Mark said, then it should help prevent some of those flare-ups from occurring. Right. Now, um, I know that uh, one of the questions that comes up is, did it help with rheumatoid arthritis? And the answer is absolutely. Um, I know that's one of the things I'm suffering from or beginning to suffer from. And it will help with the joints and also with the feet and the ankles. And this ties into, um, now that's a question of this webinar going to handle both of them. I think you've seen that it does, both rheumatoid as well as osteoarthritis. But also, um, one of the questions that came up was, um, uh, would blends or strains work for rheumatoid arthritis? Well, I think we covered a little bit of that. But I do want to point out, it's not a matter of the strains as much as making sure that the, that the product you're buying has the right terpenes in it. Please make sure when you're talking to the to the folks behind the counter that you have the myrcene, the caryophylline, and the linalool at least uh, in the products because it'll help you quite a bit that's out there. Humulene is great for it. Pinene is great as well. But make sure at least those three that are there because that's it's not a matter of strains. It's more a matter of... Um, more a matter of um, of terpenes. Now, we're in a point in cannabis right now where a lot of people for the years have talked about this strain and that strain. What we found out is with the terpenes working in a different cannabinoids, we actually call things cultivars today. Yes. And the cultivar is the fingerprint. What does that product do? And that product is a combination of the cannabinoids, the terpenes, the flavonoids, and it tells you what it actually does. So again, Pitt, if you really take the lead on the terpenes, Again, myrcene, beta caryophylline, linalool is going to help you with rheumatoid arthritis. And when it asks what's best for arthritis, whether it's indica, sativa, again, go back to the terpenes. Yes. Don't worry about your, don't worry about, now, I will tell you, uh, indicas will relax you. Sativas will make you more energetic. Hybrids are kind of right in the middle. It depends on what you want to do. I use, uh, and then I use a, uh, a sativa leaning product in the morning and the early afternoon because it helps me with my energy. In the evenings, I stick to Indicas because it helps me relax and kind of calm down for the evening. So you might want to take a look at that as a guide, but I basically pay more attention to the terpenes than I do, than I do anything else. And then, of course, the question is, does medical marijuana help with arthritic pain? Absolutely. Now, the gummies do help, but again, I'm going to go back to the, our gummy comments earlier. Please make sure with the gummies that you take them and wait at least an hour, maybe even an hour and a half. Um, yes. I know that um, I have uh, folks that were, and especially with the chocolates, uh, instant chocolates are great. Um, they're tempting, okay? But you don't want to take, you don't want to eat half the chocolate bar, okay? Then you will, then you will be able to feel pretty good at the end of that. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Uh, no, the best way to go about using into chocolates, because they are really delicious, is to take your serving them out and then wrap up the chocolate bar and put it away. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, you're just going to keep munching and munching on it and overdo it, most likely. <laughs> right, right. Um, Carolyn asked a question uh, that came in, and that is, I love the idea of live seminars and conferences. Um and you're asking, are we going to be doing live seminars? The answer is yes. Um, I'm in discussions right now. Next quarter, next quarter, we are going to be doing more live seminars. Um, we're going to be doing a few more here in Florida. I'm in the process of looking at what locations we're going to do that. Also, we're going to be doing seminars in Georgia and also in Mississippi as well. Um, so I just thought I'd let you know that we will be doing more live seminars in the future this year um, that come out into play. And we will continue to do the weekly um, webinar series. We're still going to be doing that, but we're going to augment that with some seminars as well because we're getting a lot of comments that people love to just be able to talk to people, you know, yes. do it one on one. So uh, it's there. So it says, "What can I do for lupus and inflammatory arthritis?" This again comes back to using again not only the right the right um, 
uh, uh, terpenes, but also pay attention to a higher concentration of CBD. CBD will help you with the lupus. It will help you quite a bit with uh, in inflammation. You want to talk about that a little bit, uh, uh, Lisa? Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, you know, and so like, as we touched on a few times now, you know, you might have to try a few different products to see what's going to target your inflammation best. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to handling inflammation and reducing inflammation, that's some of the most promising medicinal aspects of cannabis there is. And mm -hmm. so it's a really, really, there's a really good chance it will help you <laughs> for anything right. with inflammation, for sure. Yeah. And that, and that the, the next question is pretty much the same question is, yes. can it help with polyarthritis, meaning more than one of the one type and also severe degenerative disc disease? The answer is yes. Severe degenerative disc disease is just painful, period. And also that a lot of that comes from some of the inflammation and some of it candidly is just because of the damage that's done to the disc. Yes. You want to, in the case of severe degenerative disc disease, uh, the question earlier about, uh, I'm using a one-to-one, -one, is there something else I should look at? And we mentioned increasing the amount of CBD. You may want to, in the case, that case, which is addressing pain, go to a one-to-one -one type of a ratio. And maybe even having a, a, a one-to-two, maybe higher THC in that particular case, because the THC will help quite a bit with the, with the, with the pain that's out there. Um, I'm using, I'm using a, a product that uses a higher concentration of THC to be able to address a lot of my pain whenever I get in that particular situation. Um, people ask what's the best way to consume medical cannabis for maximum pain relief. Uh, I actually, and this is going to be something where um, when I was in a situation where I had literally the pain level was a seven or an eight, sometimes even a nine, um, I found the best way to handle it was by being able to use a concentrate. I used, I said, I found that using a vape was the best way to handle it, but not rolling a joint and not using the blunt. Because as we mentioned earlier, the minute you light that blunt, you're do, reducing, you're getting rid of all the, all half of the cannabinoids, almost all the terpenes and all the, all the flavonoids. I found that I used, uh, I used some concentrates to be able to do that. And I know that, there, so when you hear words like wax and you hear like things like butter, I am a huge fan of um, rosin and resins. And yes. the reason for that is because they are very natural ways of making it. Probably the closest that you can come to having all the, what they call the whole plant that's in there. I have become a, in fact, I'm almost exclusively using rosins and resins now to be able to help me with my, my pain relief. And as I mentioned earlier, if I don't use cannabis for a day and a half or maybe even two days, my pain, relief, my pain level will get up to a seven or an eight. So um, I know it does work. And as long as I'm uh, using it properly and using it on a daily basis, but again, pay attention to the fact that this is a situation that's not going to go away. It's, it's something that's always there. So I've got to do something in the morning, something in the early afternoon, and something in the evening. And, and in my particular case, I actually take a chocolate, a little square of chocolate in the evening to help me sleep. So it's got, you got to just have the coverage that's out there. A lot of people will take it in the morning and not take it in the afternoon and find they can't sleep at night. And that's because your body needs that medication that's there. Just like sometimes a doctor will tell you, Take two pills in the morning, take one in the in two pills in the evening. It's a very similar type of administration that's there. Um, what's the best administration method? Um, it just depends on what you like. Some people don't like vaping. Some people do. Some people like some people like to smoke a joint. I mean, I have mm -hmm. I have a couple of friends who they're all hippies. That's way of putting it. And they've been doing this for a long time. I have one very, very good friend. And he tells me he gets more, he gets as much therapeutic relief out of rolling the joint as he does smoking it. Mm -hmm. I personally am not a joint roller. Uh, I don't do, do that. Uh, what I tend to do is I tend to use the concentrates. And then what I also found is that I, I'm more of a tinctures, uh, uh, topical uh, gummies type of person. It just that I, I, fact, I think, I think my mom, for example, has become the gummy queen. So um, I just had to worry about her timing, but she really, she, she really does do that. Nice. Um, which might help throbbing pain in my, in, in my finger joints. I have several collapsed uh, joints from osteoporosis and rheumatoid arthritis. This goes back to what Nana found out. And to be blunt, my little finger right here, this in the last uh, month or two has decided to let me know that arthritis is there. Uh, it will definitely help. Uh, what I do is I take, I've upped the amount of CBD that I'm using in my daily regime. And then also I'm using a topical uh, literally in the morning and in the evenings to be able to help me with my the throbbing pain. When I put that topical on, it, it literally, literally within five minutes reduces the amount of pain that's out there. Now it doesn't take it to zero, 
but it will definitely get rid of a lot of the throbbing that's out there. In my particular case, I I I got to a point I was a I was away from my my home for a while for for about a day, and I wasn't and I left my cannabis at home. And when I got home, my finger was killing me, and I used some I used a topical to be able to get, get the pain down, and I was able to go to work that night and be able to do that. And you can I'm a huge fan of topicals. I think they're an excellent option, especially if you're looking to reduce pain and maintain extreme clarity of mind. I think that they are an excellent option. Right. So CBG, CBD, or both for pain relief. Actually, both work great. CBG works great for pain. There's no question about it. If you can put them both together, one and one is three. And also to make sure there's a little bit of THC in there. Okay. Yes. If don't just go, don't don't use just the 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 the, the CBD products by themselves. That touch of THC, one and one is three. I think that's really, really important to, to pay attention to. And what's the best way to administer? Um, as I mentioned, I would take a look at, um, <clears throat> I personally prefer um, uh, 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 tinctures that are out there. Um, if you have immediate pain that you have to address, I would pay attention to a concentrate. Uh, <laughs> it makes a lot of sense that are out there. And a lot of times the actual pens themselves, uh, the concentrates that you use have a temperature setting. And so I would set it at the middle temperature so that it'd be able to get the maximum amount of uh, terpenes uh, that'll help you quite a bit. We have a whole, we'll have a seminar on a whole terpenes and temperatures and things at the end of March. But as a quick guide, that would be one that's really, really out there. Mm -hmm. um, so Anonymous asked a great question. What is CBG? Uh, well, when the little cannabis plant is, when they, they plant it, when that seed pops up, the first thing that's created is CBG. It's called the mother of all cannabinoids. And from there, what the plant does is then morphs into THCA, CBDA, and CBCA. And then from there, it morphs into CBD, THC, and, and CBG. There's a whole chart that we'll, we'll, put, we'll include, uh, when we have the follow-up, we'll include a chart that shows you the, the evolution of this, how it goes through raw, heated, and, and aged, how that all, that all gets created. So CBG is, is in essence, <clears throat> one of the key, it's called the mother cannabinoid, this is yes. where everything else really comes from. And it's very, very effective. What's the best way to administer it? Um, well, you know, there's there's a lot of different ways of doing it. Again, a lot of the products that you can purchase, um, whether they're um, tinctures uh, or, or, can, or, or concentrates, I know that also CBG comes in pill format. And I know pill format is very, 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 very effective for that. Now, what's the pills that work like the gummies and the edibles? You take them, it takes about an hour, maybe two hours of work. But again, it, it changes from delta-9 uh, THC to uh, delta-11 hydroxy THC, which is a more uh, effective medication for your body. And it works very, very well. That's, that's really there. So I'd say to take a look at, if you can find a, uh, a pill, that's great. If not, stick with the, uh, stick with the, uh, the tinctures or the concentrates. Okay. Lisa, you have any comments on that? No, CBG is pretty amazing. Um, it's definitely a lesser known cannabinoid. Um, you know, it's it's a cannabinoid like THC and CBD, but mm -hmm. it's a little lesser known. And I think part of the reason why is because it's usually not found in those higher concentrations like THC and CBD is. Right. But it is definitely gaining steam and you're starting to see it incorporated into more and more products. Right. And from the studies that have been done on CBG, it's incredibly promising as an anti-inflammatory so yeah. if you can find it definitely try it yeah definitely it's there joan you asked a great question what uh, how do you use rosins and resins well obviously they come in concentrate forms you can buy them from from uh in fact i bought a rosin and a resin yesterday from you but i you can also get them as cartridges for a vape pen in other words yes. you can buy it if you have a pen itself you can actually see right here it actually comes with the cartridges on the top they're right up here and what you're able to do is you're able to have that that drop in here, and and then it, that just connects right into the pen here. That's actually the best way to be able to handle it. Uh, Lee, in that particular presentation, I had one on what is a rosin and a resin. Can you pull that up real quick? Because uh, um, rosins, if you see here, are 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 basically uh, they're they're full spectrum products. Resins are the same way. When Insum goes to make the product itself, you're either going to drop it in an ice bath, which freezes it, and you, you pull off the terpenes that way. Uh, I'm sorry, you pull, out, you pull off the cannabinoids that way, or you basically put them in wax paper and you basically uh, really squash them down. So rosin, basically, it, we call it solventless. What mm -hmm. they do is they dry the flour here, they press it between two plates, 
and basically when they do that, it, it basically melts the terpenes off and puts it on actually actually on the parchment paper. Is that correct? Yeah, and so um, how we do it at IMSA, which we actually just released a whole new rosin line, so this is mm -hmm. perfect timing. Uh, so definitely, if you're interested in trying a rosin product, come see us. But yeah, that's what you do is you take a plant, you take the trichomes, which are where the active ingredients like CBD and THC and the terpenes are created on the plant. You shake off those trichomes. And then what we do is we press them with a whole lot of pressure between two metal plates that are minimally heated. They're not heated that hot. It's just heated enough to melt those trichomes. And then it's a lot like olive oil. It's just going to squeeze out all of that good stuff that you're looking for. So it's going to mm. squeeze out all of those cannabinoids and terpenes that are in that plant material into something that's a, of a higher concentration. And mm. so if you find that you uh, really love something with a high terpene profile in there, lots and lots of terpenes, uh, rosin product is going to be amazing for you. It is right. going to be very, very strong because it's also going to have a concentrated amount of cannabinoids. And so it'll be strong in THC as well, but it's going to have a huge amount of terpenes. Some of the most terpene rich, flavorful ways to medicate um, in the Florida market, actually. Right. And also resin is, is interesting too. Is that right? Tell us about resin. So resin is very similar in that it's used very similarly. It's, um, you know, just a whole lot of cannabinoids and terpenes in a product. It's also flash like frozen, which is really cool. So that yeah. Really yeah, we do that with, yeah, we do that with our rosins and our resins. Yeah. Uh, and so that the only difference is, is that instead of taking that plant material and pressing it with plates, we're taking that plant material and we're using a solvent to strip away all of the good stuff. So we use a solvent to strip away those cannabinoids and terpenes, and then we kick those solvents out. And then that lap, that material we have is called a resin. Mm -hmm. And so um, sometimes people will use the word resin and they're talking about waxes, shatters, batters. Sometimes they'll use the word resin just to talk about a very specific consistency. Right. Um, but basically it's just a concentrate that was made with a solvent. Right, now what I love is that rosins and resins keep and maintain a lot of the terpenes and a lot of the flavonoids and a lot of the cannabinoids that are in them. Yes. And so it, it works, works very, very well. That's it's really out there. And we also hear about products, which I should mention. We didn't we mentioned rosin and resins. We we don't want to overlook what they call RSO, Rick Simpson oil. Uh, RSO is where Rick Simpson is a gentleman who was trying to treat his melanoma, well, born 20 years ago, and found out that by being able to take a plant, a whole plant. And being able to process it, he was able to basically maintain about 50 to 80 percent of the cannabinoid content, plus all the terpenes and all the flavonoids. And it works very, very effective. Now, the good news about RSO, it's very effective. Bad news about RSO, and the same thing applies to rosin and resins, they are higher in THC, so they're very strong. I tend to call RSO the 151 Bacardi of yes. the cannabis world. Okay. And rosin and resins are pretty much close behind that. So just be very careful. It's it's you just don't need as much no. to get the same effect. That's a nice way of saying you don't have to spend as much money either, okay, yes. to get the relief that's, that's, that's really out there. I hope we answered, we answered that question for you and that's there. Can you get rosins and resins and edibles? I'm not aware of them right now. Are you, Lisa? Can you get rosins and resins where? As an edible. Oh, fuck. You know, you're going to get some insider information now. I don't, um, I don't know of any of that are available. <laughs> well, we're actually currently right now formulating edibles made with rosins. Mm -hmm. So they're not on the market just yet, but they will be. So if you're mm -hmm. looking for an edible that contains rosin, check back with us soon and we may have it for you. Yeah, you didn't right. even know that, Mark. <laughs> I did not know that. That's insider information. Thank you. And you heard it here for the first time, which is great. I know, heard it here first. <laughs> sure. Now, one of the other questions that came up is, is I have um, AS and my pain has become very widespread, um, total body stiffness and flame. Again, look at CBD, the high concentrates of CBD. I would use probably a four to one, maybe even a 10 to one uh, CBD to THC product. That'll help you quite a bit because that's what you're really doing. You're trying to get rid of that inf inflammation, which really gets rid of the pain. It's very similar to very similar uh, treatment to uh, to arthritis. If you can get that inflammation down, it'll help you quite a bit. I would tend to recommend a higher concentration of CBD in the products that you're using. 
And the other question is, uh, will, can medical marijuana um, reduce neuropathic pain uh, in the lumbar in, in lumbar area? The answer is yes, absolutely. We're doing a webinar in uh, three weeks uh, on neuropathic pain. Uh, 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 Dr. Terrell Newton is joining me for that one. And the answer to your question is yes, absolutely. It'll work quite, it'll work very effectively for that. Um, we talked about will it reduce glaucoma, and glaucoma, and the answer is yes, it will. My mother is a testament to that. I have a neighbor of mine who had a terrible glaucoma problem, and they were giving him all kinds of pharma drugs. We put him on, um, we put him on some CBD, and he is now off of all the pharma drugs, which is great yeah. for that type of thing. Um, so the question is, what's the best proportion of THC to CBD for arthritis and neuropathy? It depends on you. Yes. Every person's body is different. It's very much like alcohol. It's very much like caffeine. Uh, every person reacts differently to it. Some people can take a little bit. It does a lot. Some people need a little bit more. Um, you know, so it really, it, it, that's what the thing about cannabis, and by the way, the same is true for pharma drugs. You know, doctors will recommend pharma drugs based on your weight. But a lot of times when you have a problem, you're going back to the doctor constantly to try to figure out what that, what that right dosing level is. In the case of CBD and, and, and cannabis, you actually control that. Um, so I would say, what's the best proportion? I would recommend something that's higher with CBD as an approach, but really try a couple of alternatives. Try try the products and find out really what works, what works best for you. Um, you. You'll feel it. You don't need somebody to tell you. When you when you get the right combination, your body will feel a lot better. Yes. Lisa, do you have any comments on that? No, I think that that's I think that's perfectly said. You know. Um, it is a little bit of a journey, you know, when it comes to cannabis, everyone does react a little bit differently, mm -hmm. um, or sometimes a lot differently. And so if you find that, you know, one ratio or terpene combination isn't working for you, that's fine. Just try something else. And eventually the odds are really, really good that you will find something that works for you. Right. Uh, one thing I just want to say is that arthritis and pain specifically, uh, some of the most common conditions that we see people come in for. And so don't be nervous. Your bud tender or associate that you're working with has very likely, you know, talked with somebody who has a similar condition. And so they're going to be able to tell you what is popular and what other people have tried that has worked for them. And so, you know, come in, give us what your day looks like, what your routine looks like, and we can start you off on your cannabis journey then. I'll help you quite a bit. The, uh, the question is, what's the best method and the fastest relief for osteoarthritis? Uh, candidly, it is vaping. Yes. Okay. And I would say vaping with a concentrate uh, or and or with a rosin or a resin. Best yes. way of putting it. I would say that's the best, the fastest way to get rid of it. I carry I carry this little vape pen with me constantly. If, uh, if, if I ever get frisked, I have it with me. And I reason it because... Again, I have arthritis. I have uh, knee replacements. I have arth I have problems with my neck. Sometimes I'll kick a curb. Uh, I'll do something, and I get pain right away. And I just take a couple of hits from that, and it really, really you'll be shocked at how fast uh, it worked. Within within a couple of minutes, the pain gets right back to where it was before, unless I did something really crazy like injured <laughs> or something like that out there. Uh, and one of the other last question here says I use a tincture one to one and fifteen milligrams of turmeric. Uh, with some success treating arthritis, that is a great approach. You, you're you're on the right track. Uh, turmeric is really great. I use I take turmeric every day. I make myself a smoothie, and part of my smoothie is is turmeric that's in a turmeric nice. and ginger. I put both of those in 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 there. Now, uh, as far as the tincture, you may want to try a higher CBD to THC. You might want to try to two to one, two to one, or four to one, and see how that works with your turmeric as well. Because again, if you're going after arthritis, attack that inflammation. Give it, give your body the resources it needs to be able to to attack that. It's there. So I think we've handled. We do have a few more questions. It says, "Okay, anxiety keeps hold of me like a prisoner. Can medical cannabis help?" The answer is absolutely. I have a number of patients that um, suffer from anxiety and stress, and um, I have one one patient that actually has come to me and made it very clear that. She was, by using medical cannabis, especially a high regime of CBD to THC, she uses a 20 to 1 or a 12 to 1, depending on uh -huh. which product that she's using. And it's really helped with anxiety. Her exact words were, um, I didn't realize what it was like to be a happy person. Okay. 
And the answer is yes, it makes it makes a big difference that's out there. Um, I also know um, it, it's, it, it is very effective. I heard that in many, many cases. Is there research on the long-term use of cannabis uh, for sleeping? I use tincture. The answer is yes. In fact, at the um, third week of February, or excuse me, of March, uh, Dr. Greg Holt's going to join me. He's a sleep specialist from Houston, and he we're going to be talking about the research that's been done and and what can be done to use to help you with sleep. Tinctures are effective. Uh, so are so is vaping. Uh, there's a number of different approaches. I, I personally find the best approach I have to sleep in the evening. I take a little square of of chocolates because it does help me just relax and sleep, uh, and it lasts for ten hours, which is great. See a lot of your tinctures, which will last four to six hours. Your vaping will last two hours. Um, uh, you want something that's going to be long lasting, and that's where the edibles, the gummies, the, the, the tinctures and things like that, they'll help you quite a bit with that. Um, can I find studies on cannabis using use during pre, mid, and post menopause? The answer is absolutely. There's a lot of studies out there. In fact, one of the places you might want to look is Whoopi Goldberg did uh, a, a whole CBD product line uh, just for just for that. Um, and you might want to go to her website and, and look that up. She, she did a lot of work. Uh, it's been out for three or four years. And I would say that I don't, I don't have that study with me. I, I read it, but I don't have it readily available right now. But I'd say go look up what Whoopi Goldberg has done. Uh, she's she's kind of led the, the the charge on that. And it's helped with, I know it's helped a lot of, um, a lot of ladies in those particular conditions. Uh, can you cover some examples of dosing that are commonly recommended or that has helped others? I know you're supposed to start low and go slow. The answer is best way, the best example is start with a one to one. Take 0.25 milliliters of a of a um of a tincture drop. And then well, here you go. That's great. There, thank you very much, Lee, for putting this out. What you might want to do is start low and 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 try that. Then as you raise the amount of of uh the, the, the amount of, of product that you're taking, maybe a half a point two five. 0 0.5, 0 0.75, depending where you get to a point where you're beginning to feel, you feel the symptoms being addressed. You may want to, sometimes you might want to try it when you take too much, you'll feel you get anxious, you'll find it's not working as well. So you want to baby back down. Once you do that, I would go to a ratio where you increase the amount of CBD, uh, two to one, four to one, eight to one, 12 to one, 20 to one. Uh, my wife uses a 12 to one, for example and it helps her quite a bit. We found it's much more effective for her than the one-to-one. -one. So I would say, continue to take, take a look at, at that. Don't just stop at one-to-one. -one. Uh, try the four-to-ones, try the eight-to-ones. And in certain cases, in my particular case, where I have a, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, um, I have a high tolerance to CB, to THC. Uh, and so in my case, because of the high levels of pain, I will go to a one-to-four in certain cases when I have a lot of pain that's out there. Um, and I've done a lot of work. I've been worked out, stressed, things like that. It works out there. So I hope that really helps answer that particular question there. Um, so Lisa, I think we've uh, covered a lot of the questions. Um, we have INSA is a good resource. Uh, if you need to get your card, please go see uh, Medical Marijuana Treatment Clinics of Florida, MMTC. And if you're looking for just CBD products, which really INSA doesn't handle just CBD products. You have a lot of THC in your products. We have a CBD store, and what's interesting is we did that because we work with MMTC. MMTC recommends for their patients to get a bottle of THC when they're going through the dosing, because if you take THC and you begin to feel the effects that are negative, if you take the same amount of CBD, it actually mitigates that and brings, you, brings that high back down and resets everything back to zero. So having some CBD when you're going through your dosing your dosing process, well, it can help you quite a bit. That's out there. Plus, it helps your pets. It's there. So, Lisa, any comments you want to make? Um, I would just say, you know, come visit us at INSA. You know, we um, we're new to Florida, but we're so excited to be here, and our team is wonderful. We've got a five star rating for almost all of our locations on Google, and you can't buy that. That's that's just satisfied customers and patients letting us know that we're doing a good job. So come see us. And I will say a, we are planning a fun event in about 10 days where if you come to an IMSA location, there'll be a food truck out there. And if you try one of our products, you get a free food item. So keep an eye out for that. You know, go to IMSA.com, sign up to be one of our insiders and you'll get all the cool details. <laughs> That's very cool. Well, listen, I want to thank you, uh, Lisa, for joining me tonight. Some great comments as usual. 
Um, and I think you're joining me next week for pain management. Is that correct? You got it. All right. Well, we'll be talking about that over the next day or two. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining me tonight. I know this is going about an hour and a half, which is a long, a long webinar. Um, but hopefully it's helped you. Uh, our, my goal is very simple. I want to help you get your life back. And if I can help just one person make just one person that watch this webinar can get their life back and get back somewhat of normalcy, uh, like, 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 with, um, uh, like with Nana, being able to hopefully get back to living a normal life. She can hold a fork now. She can hold a pen. She can do, do the remote control. I think it'll help quite a bit. We'd like to hear from you about the topics you want to hear, want to hear from next quarter. Uh, we will be doing more live seminars. But I think also we want to thank you very much for joining us tonight. We, we know your time is valuable. We want to, want to take advantage of it. So thank you very much. I do want to, before I sign off, I do want to thank two people who make this all happen. One is Lee, Lee in the background, who's very timely slides. Thank you, Lee. That was very helpful. And Leah, who helped answer some questions. Um, you know, we, without them, this doesn't work. So thank you very much. And I want to throw a special shout out to Alisa Katera. She's a lady who actually came up with the idea of these webinars and um, she was the CBG of this webinar series. She's, she was the mother of, of us there. So thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Be safe. Have a great weekend. And hopefully we'll see you next week for pain management. And please look at our schedule because there's areas like dosing, terpenes, sleep that probably can help you. So please join us. Thank you very much and have a great evening.